SoCal Crusher. Not lately. I'm SoCal Crusher lately. Good morning, everybody. We're here at uh, Parker, doing something a little bit different. Here with my good friend, Kurt Dove. What's up? We're gonna see if we can get some smallies, maybe a, a big striper, woo woo. <laughs> uh, maybe some large mouth too. We're gonna check things out. Neither one of us have been here in a little bit, so we're gonna kind of pick it apart, see what it's doing. I think the water was about 52. It's got a good flow right now. Uh, the breeze is pretty much non-existent. At the moment. At the moment. It's supposed to get really <laughs> nasty later. And uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can come up with. Man, I'm super excited to be on the uh, on the episode. SoCal Crusher, been, been watching some of these shows. So uh, right man, I'm looking forward to a fun day and uh, hopefully we can put some fish in the boat and uh, maybe teach you something or at least have right. some fun. Right, <laughs> right. We're definitely gonna have fun. Let's do it. Let's have fun. I'm excited about it. I'm starting out with the uh, depths evoke 1.8 in the craw color. Just want to see Kurt's throwing a jerk bait. Throw two different things. You know, when you haven't been somewhere, try to really see what you come up with. There's little patches of grass right through here, so I definitely want to grind through that a little bit. And I can feel it hitting the bottom, so that's good. <clears throat> in your past experience here today, fish really key in on the current when when it's flowing this this hard um yeah and uh most of the time that i see people catch good ones it seems like it's down the middle in the grass and i don't know why that is but down the middle of the river yeah nice and my buddy that has a house up here i called him yesterday he said throw like a craw he said jig jig he said jig with a twin tail very cool and that was his his best suggestions. So I was like, all right, we'll give that a shot. Hopefully when the sunlight gets up, we'll be able to see a little bit more here. Obviously it's early in the morning. We've still got these low light conditions and uh, we were able to see some of those grass spots, you know, right. once the light gets up and, and uh, till then we'll, maybe we'll be a little bank beating unless we see some on the grass. <laughs> right, that is for sure. <laughs> Is that your boy? That's my friend. Nice. Does he know this joint? Huh? Does he know this joint pretty good? Yeah, he fishes it a few times a year. God, it is ripping. Not bump. There we go. Fish. Yeah. Nice smalls. There you go. All right. That didn't take long. Now when you got the master here, <laughs> Kurt taking you. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Got him on the evoke. A little evoke 1.8. Not gonna let me do that, are you? We're just gonna do it this way then. There you go. <laughs> Manhandle. Right? <laughs> Look at that. How about that red color, man? It seems like always cold water conditions. Right. The red color really kind of shines, you know, especially in the early winter or late winter, whenever the water temps in that 50 degree range. This fish really like those red colors. Big time. So that's a nice little healthy smallie right there. Yeah, that's a great one. Pretty colors. All right. How big? I would Looks say like two, two. Two and a quarter. Yeah. These fish are weighing heavy right now. You know, in the yeah. winter time, they get that pre-spawn thing going and they're really fattened up and... All right. Woo! On a shirt? No, on a, the Evoke 1.8. Oh shit. Yeah. That's a big grass line right there, huh? Yeah, but we'll 
Kurt noticed that there was a bunch of coots, so he goes, let's go see if there's grass, and yeah. <laughs> As you guys all know, we did an episode with uh, Dave and his brother. That's Dave and Christy Zamora, or my very good friends. So? They are, oh no, skunk! Woo! <laughs> yeah! Sorry if I woke anybody up. <laughs> that echoed gnarly in here. Hell yeah. Just so you guys know with this crazy current, just keep me uh, keep keep a lookout for buoys and all that kind of stuff because we'll run into something real quick. There's one, there's one. Got him. Looks like a stripe. You got a stripe? Got the old stripe. Your, Hell yeah. your revenge fish. <laughs> <laughs> your revenge fish from your last visit, right? Got him on the flit. Swing him in here. There we go. There you go. Flip 120. That's the deal right there. First fish of the morning. That was like a super long pause he ate that thing. Just keep watching back there for the buoys every once in a while. Yeah, I'm trying to keep my eye Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, it went. It's mostly my job as a captain, so. <laughs> you keep talking to the camera. <laughs> right? Keep catching fish. I like that little, did you just have a little striper on there? Chasing it? I've seen one or two, but I didn't see one right there. I don't, I don't have my glasses on. It looked like it. I need to throw them on here. You know I'm hitting it right. I'm sticking a little bit of grass. I'm hitting it right. I want to bump that bottom. You want to keep that bait. That way it looks like a little craw going through. It'll get picked up by a small mouth. And... Also, when I'm throwing a crank, if I'm not bumping, I like to give it little, little pops. Almost like a jerk bait, but not as aggressive. Just kind of little, little twitch, little pops here and there. Just make that bait a little bit more erratic than just a brrr, straight swim. I like to call these areas, basically we're on an inside turn of the river right here. I like to call these areas sweeps. Really the, you know, it kind of shallows up from the outside bend, usually obviously the deepest, and you get on these inside turns, they get a little bit more shallow get some better grass growth like we were looking for like you mentioned before and then also at the same time the the water just kind of sweeps right over top of it so it blows bait fish over top of it makes a great ambush point for these fish you're gonna head up I got big before you do. go get it I'm gonna go get that big striper before you do Go get it! <laughs> yeah, they're good people. Like, my wife and I stay at their house a lot. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, because we actually bought a house last year in Blythe and they're fixing it up for us. Right on the, right on the river. Always wanted a river house, huh? Man, that current is kicking. Ooh. This is jacket. That one spot though is up here where they, they're basically, I think they're setting up for spawn and just stacked up here. It's, it's kind of weird, it gets really shallow and then there's like huge clots of grass. It's all like sand bottom and they sit right on those, like on the ledge. Uh -huh. Yeah, we just normally drag like a little, little swim bait like that and it's Last tournament we were up there, we got 18 pounds on smallmouth alone. Nice. Yeah, they get pretty big up there. But this spot gets a lot of pressure. Yeah. Everybody. So it's always like, you'll see guys stacked here, beer, we'll go up there and start knocking them. But if you guys want to run so up how there. Do you, how do you get up there? Oh, it's right here. It just gets a little. It's sketchy it gets, right here. You just got to follow me because it. you got to know the area because it does get shallow. Okay. And it's very rocky. It looks scary, but it's not because it's we're super hot. It's deeper than that book. Got a little deeper now. Let me show. So the Optimum Baby Boom Boom, it's a new color that we're going to be releasing in uh, springtime, I believe. It's called the Crusher Shad. Stop. 
fish. Oh. There's one. Nice smallie. Oh, very nice. Nice smallie. Yep, right. Here it comes. Boom! Oh, hell yeah. Nice small. Oof. Yeah, man, I love this. Uh, got got a nice small. We had to get that flit out of the net, but uh, flit 120, chartreuse shad. Man, I love it. Even in clear water, you know, sometimes you go to those translucent colors, but these these fish are such sight feeders. They'll come from a long distance to find a solid colored jerk bait like that. And uh, flit 120 is always great. And uh, dude, that's a fatty. What that do you think? That is a fatty. <laughs> Pretty cool. Definitely bigger than mine. Pre spawner, no doubt about it. Yep. So. Great fish, probably three and a half pounder. Super stocky. Let's let it back in and right. get us another one. Way to go. Sweet. Sweet. Let's get another one. <laughs> yeah, I gotta change up my batteries. I gotta do something. I gotta try this right here. We're sitting in kind of a little bit deeper water. It goes up shallow with a little bit of grass, so just want to see. Just throwing the bomb. Which bait is that one? The Madness? Glideway. Glideway. Glideway 176. Swimbait Republic. Cos knows the big baits. Yeah. Guy actually swims better with the snap. I like it. One thing I noticed though with smallmouth and swim baits, they like something twitchy. Oh yeah? Not so glidey. Oh yeah? Something that you can, uh, quick reaction to, like boom, boom, boom. Right. right. Will they smoke that thing? They will. I haven't caught them on this specific bait, but right, I Right, right. Oh, look at, look at, look at, look at, eat it, you suck. Eat it. Oh, I see it. I see that it. That ain't a small fish either. Holy crap, there's a big fish. <laughs> I'll throw a follow up. Do it. Keep slurling. Yeah, that was that was big. He was just sitting right underneath of it. Do you see how big it was though? It, like, I just saw out? I just saw a little little brown. Jeff, when you get a big swim bait, you know, and, and you're working it like that and you see a follow, do you typically like to throw a follow-up bait or do you just keep throwing the big swim bait and, and and hope you get the right twitch and make it make them react on it next cast. Yeah, I'll usually just keep throwing the swim bait on them. But uh, if I've got somebody in the boat, like if I fish with Dave or something, he'll have like a wacky or something like that, and I'll just right. say, yeah, I'll throw back on. Kind of kind of like my scenario there, right? right because right. you know if they're following it, you know, he kind of looked like he wanted to eat it, but if they really wanted it right there, he would have eaten it. So right. Most of the time, you throw that smaller profile, just you know, a little. Bubba Shad, Opti Shad, something just a little, they'll smack that instead. Right. You know? Very cool. But I mean, swim ba big swim baits is a great search bait, you know? You find a lot of fish that you won't see on anything else. Like this whole week, I've been fishing down in Blythe area, well, a couple days I should say, and the only bites and follows have been on anything over six inches long. I can't, nothing on, Crankbaits, spitterbaits, chatterbaits, tried it all. Kind of crazy, but. It's wild how the hell I react to that stuff. But like you say, it gives you an idea that there's fish in an area. Right. You know, sometimes you, they might not just be, you know, slapping on it and, and you might not be catching them, but it gives you a great idea that there's fish in an area and, and maybe you could work through a, a different styles of techniques to potentially then boat a bunch of fish. Yeah. Now you saw him when you did that lift your tip up thing, huh? Yeah, yeah, it kind of brought him up. I mean, I probably would have seen him either way. It's so clear here, but usually that reacts them to strike it. 
or, or can tip. help, I should say. Yeah, I, I like that little technique. I haven't used that before. So what he's doing at the end of his cast, he's using it like a jerk bait, and then he gets towards the end and brings his tip up, gives it a different reaction, so that change in the reaction could cause that fish to bite, which is uh, definitely key. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. Oh. Yo. I think it God, saw my that shadow. Dirty rat, that dirty rat. I look, That's all right. We're there. We're, 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 we know where they're at. We I know to where step they're back, at. Dude. <laughs> I'm like, we know where they're at. Fuck yeah. Going back. Just non committal. I would have never guessed there was. There's one. Come on, baby. Stay on. Stay on. Stay on. Stay on. Stay on. Jeff, hook me up with a net. It's got Grab a it. lot of treble hooks. <laughs> Coming. <laughs> look at this, brother. There we go. Come on in here. Boom. Here we go, another solid Colorado River Smalley. Man, that fish just jammed that flit. And got that chartreuse shad. Let me explain a little bit what Jeff and I found out here. And um, basically it's grass lines. These fish, what's happening is we're going down the river, we're seeing these grass lines. We actually got really lucky this morning and we saw some coots on this same grass line and uh, we were able to capitalize and Jeff got a nice small mouth and I got a nice striper. We came back down here after we went way up and the water started dropping a whole bunch, but man, we could see now the grass line visually with our eyes and now we're working that flit right on the edge of that grass line, catching some beautiful smallies just like this guy. Let him go back. Oh. Oh, he wants to go. Say bye-bye. There he goes. Awesome fish. He's going to jump. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, he did. But um, essentially, you know, we went way up close to the dam, and the water started dropping big time. Jeff and I freaked out. <laughs> we caught some nice fish up there, had a couple followers, caught a nice fish, had a couple followers, and now headed back down here. But, Jeff, man, what do you think, dude? You know, it definitely, when we were up there, and... We went around that corner and we came back and that rock that we were looking at was totally out of the water, so it probably dropped it must have at least six to eight inches in about five minutes. <laughs> it was quick. When we it came up, quick. it was what, three feet, two feet? So do the yeah, math we, on the way back down and it's all rocky bottom. It was a little hairball, but we pulled it. Yeah, we thought it was a little sketchy. We had to get out get out of Dodge fast. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's a neat place up there. Uh, hopefully we get to come back up here sometime and do that. But for now, we're going to concentrate on these grass lines on the lower river area and uh, hopefully catch some more smallies. Right. Maybe a largemouth too. Right. And I Striper. love it when you, you know, you, neither one of us have been here much. And it's I haven't been, been here in two years and you haven't been here in like eight. Yeah, it's been since 2015. And just breaking down a fishery and figuring out where to go, what to do, right bait, right time, everything. You know, it's... It's awesome, especially when you have two guys in the boat and you're throwing two different yeah, things. Yeah, the, the first fish was on a crank, but you've had a lot more on a jerk bait. So I'm kind of switching it up. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to do the Tennessee shad. More flit 120 action. Yep. Let's do it. Got another one on the flit. Yeah. No, 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 just staying on this edge. I think there was a couple spots back there where there was a uh, little bit of rock patches. Changing your color? Probably should. Really? Lights changing. Okay. That's had the most action though. So you're yeah. thinking because they're just now following it instead of Smack yeah, it. three followers in a row. That's true. Hey, look straight ahead. Where those coots are. Does it not look like there's a grass line? It does. We it should does. check that real quick. Let's go right over there. Come on, fish. we get one more. Jeez. 13 right here. Little hump out here in the middle. Yeah, I like it. I like how it looks. It just has a good, good vibe. That's kind of the way this How many do you have? Been. You have three? Boated three. Boated three. And a striper. Is that right, Cos? Bo There's one. Got him. Got him. Good fish. Good fish. All right. 
Not as big as we thought, but got him. We'll take her. All right, Jeff, man, tell them about that uh, color change you made. Yeah, we were talking about 15 minutes ago. Kurt's like, no, I'm thinking about changing color because all I'll do is get follows. And I had it in my mind. I had this color in my mind. I was just like, oh, okay, I'm doing it. You said it. I was thinking it. I'm doing it. So, all right. Seemed like we were getting follows. We've got a change in condition right now. Sun's really high in the sky compared to what it was this morning. Jeff went to that uh, more translucent ghost chartreuse herring and uh, bam, connected. I think you got that on an up twitch. I did. I, I believe 100%. I saw that. I saw that. It was on an up twitch because I did that and it felt heavy, so I just went because swings are free, right? Oh, yeah. I've been watching you. That's awesome, man. It's nice when you can go fish with a buddy and you know you can learn some stuff and have some fun. And I'm always open for new stuff. Yeah, you got to be. Right? You know, always learning in the game. You know, just like that color change you made, you know, different conditions. Even this spot out here, you, you noticed the grass, you, you picked it out perfectly. You saw the grass out in the middle of the channel, yeah. figured it was kind of a little more shallow area, and and there you go. Boom, we went just as we started going down it, you got to fish, so. Always got to adapt and learn something. Yep, you know, like I always say, you know, I don't care if it's a five-year-old kid, if he's doing something different, and it's working, and it's just, because everybody sees things. Yes. Yeah. Even a novice fisherman, it doesn't matter. You see things in a different way, and it helps, you know? Absolutely. Especially nowadays, you know, when you got, there's a lot of pressure, you know? So to be able to do something a little bit different, change things up, oops. Well, you know what Matt's gonna say, right? Oh, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so a little recap of our day. Oh, and all, it was a really fun day. You know, we spent the morning kind of picking things apart, trying to figure things out. We got a couple pretty quick. Uh, the first one I got was on the Evoke 1.8 Craw. That red color. That red color is just, they like that. Awesome in cold water conditions. Right. Very, very cool. And then Kurt got on a good one with the jerk bait. You know, he had a couple really nice ones. He got, what, three? Yeah, I think I caught three and, and had several followers. And, uh, you know, these cold water conditions were tough for us today. We had a lot of wind also. Um, those fish were definitively on those grass lines. And, and if we made a good cast, got on those grass lines, there was a fish around and some scattered rock made a huge difference. The, uh, the Flip 120 was my giddy up. Yep. <laughs> that, was, that was the deal with the chartreuse shad. 100%. And that got me to switch over to that one. I Got myself that little guy at the end, but. Well, that was the deal, right? We had we had some followers. As, as the right. sun got higher, they weren't committing to the to the chartreuse shad as well. You made a great switch to the uh, ghost blue back herring. And uh, man, the, you know, more translucent color. Got that chartreuse in the bottom. Those fish right. could see it. They, they're smallmouth. They like those bright colors, don't they? Right. I should have switched way earlier, but it's all right. I, I was like, oh, I, I was looking at that and the brown one went back and forth in my head but that's a lot of times you know when you get something in your head there's some kind of instinct there telling you you've had an experience in the past really important to follow that mental process 100%. you you followed it and got a fish but it sounds like you're saying maybe an hour or so before yeah. maybe it would have given you a, us another bite or two today right yeah. I, I think so because you were getting a lot of a lot of follows and sniffs and right. it was like they just wanted something different and the color change, you know? Absolutely. And, uh, man, I enjoyed the day out here, man. This this uh, part of the Colorado River is something super cool. After being up at Havasu for the last, I don't know, eight days, eight it, days. it was great to come down <laughs> here and uh, see some new scenery, uh, fish a different style than, than kind of what we were doing up there. So, uh, right. man, it's been great. And, and where can you go in 40 mile an hour winds and still have a great day of fishing. Not a right. whole lot of places, right? right? Well, and you just finished that uh, MLF series, right? The Toyota series? Yep, that's what was going on at Havasu. Got got swung in and got the top eight. <laughs> so that nice. Was, Congratulations. That cool, that's man. a good one. I appreciate really it. Really good one. So thanks for taking us out here. We're going to be heading down south 
and uh, we're gonna be fishing Martinez tomorrow and we're gonna see what we can come up with hopefully get some more videos see you guys next time adios when your bones become frail life is stagnant and stale but don't throw it away you'll miss it hey ho <laughs> That's probably going to be at the end of the show, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Always at the end of the show, Cosby puts funny that I did. Stay.